you got a rifle, you've always wanted to go hunting, you just never had anywhere to hunt at while you're watching my video. What is up, folks? Welcome back to the channel. As always, thank you for clicking on this so much. Allow me to use my outdoor experiences to a better year. Now, the number one question I get, folks, on IG, on YouTube, TikTok, all that stuff. Bro, how do you hunt public land? And now this video, we're going to cover that exactly. Now, all the information you guys need to find these spots that I hunt and explore all of Texas and what public land has to offer is really easy. All you have to do is get on the old Googler and type Texas public hunting. Easy as that, which I'll have the actual link in the description below. But if you just Google Texas public hunting, the first link that comes up will take you straight to the page that you need to be at. Now, once you're on this sweet, glorious page, you see an interactive map down there at the bottom. You click on that and bam. There it is, a map of Texas and every single public unit available for you to hunt. Now slow down there, guy. Before you get to hunting and before you even try to hit one of these spots up, there are three key things that you need. First of all, whether you're hunting public or private, you need a hunting license. Now, if you want to hunt public, you need your public permit, just like your license, you have to get it every year. And if it is your first time hunting public, or if you're born after like 1970 something, basically everyone, you have to get your hunter safety education course. Now, even if you're hunting private, I highly suggest getting this because it is very informative. It gives you information on shotgun shells, on components of a firearm and just general safety information, hunting by yourself, hunting with others and navigating the public land. It is all very important information that really you guys need if you're gonna be hunting public. So I highly suggest taking that even if you're hunting private. I will actually have a link below for 10% off the hunter safety education course through beasafehunter.org. I reached out to them. I'm not getting any kickback from it. It's just a discount for you guys. It takes two to four hours. I don't remember because I did mine four years ago. At first I was like, this is stupid. But after going through the course, it's, it's pretty educational and I don't regret it. I learned some stuff from it that I'm still applying to hunting now. So. You gotta have those three things before you can even touch any of this. But let's say you got your license, you got your permit, and you took the course, got your little certificate, you are good to go. Now, we can go back to that map and start exploring. Now on this map, you've got at least 50 properties to 80 properties, I couldn't tell you. And even within these properties, there's different units. So you can scour all night long on here and honestly if you guys want me to i will because i end up many nights just clicking on a bunch of these stars just to see what they've got to offer even though i have no intention of going and we can do that man i'm totally down for that but for time's sake the, the one i go to the most is the sam houston national forest now once you click on a star which is a unit you want to look for the legal game box now this box will tell you everything you need to know about what you can hunt when you can hunt it, and how you can hunt it. Specifically, the National Forest you guys can see here is available for white-tailed deer, archery and gun season, feral hog, waterfowl, snipe, dove, squirrel, bullfrogs, literally anything you can hunt almost, you can hunt here in the National Forest. And it tells you when you can hunt it, the dates, the times, if there's restrictions, it gives you all the information here. There's no messing it up. There's special seasons. A lot of them will have specific notes for accessing the gate. Some of them even have domestic animals that let you know, be careful for domestic animals. For instance, the National Forest has a mandatory deer check-in on the first two weekends of deer season. It gives you the sheriff's phone number, the county number, I mean, literally any information you need. And on top of that, once you get your permit, they mail you out this sweet little booklet that has basically every single unit that's on that map. It has it in this booklet. So stick it by the toilet and just go page by page, man, and just get out there and explore. I will say a vast majority of this public land is for Dove, which is pretty cool. You know, there's a hell of Dove land, but there are a lot of units that allow big game. A lot of them hog year round. You know, there's some archery only. It is all over the place. It's really up to you to just start searching. You know, click on a click on a unit and go through it. See what it has to offer and plan your next hunt. Now, this map only provides kind of a general walk-in hunt. Texas Parks and Wildlife also offers a draw hunt system. Now, for these draw hunts, it opens up 
exotic hunts. It opens up private ranch hunts. It opens up guided hunts. You can hunt bighorn sheep in the mountains, mule deer out in West Texas. I mean, almost anything you can think of, you can hunt through Texas Parks and Wildlife draw system. Now the draw system is real simple. You submit your entry and you just hope to get drawn. Every year you apply to a hunt, you are accumulating points. So every year you apply to a category, you're getting a point. Next year you have two points. Next year you have three points. And so they cube those points. I know it's confusing, but however many points they have, they cube them. And those are how many straws you have in the hat. And at a certain date, they will pick them. They'll send you an email if you got picked. And if you don't, there's a page on here that you can go check the status of your hunts, whether you've been drawn or not. There's also a second draw on a lot of these hunts. Uh, and you just will find yourself constantly checking the status of that hunt. And last year I actually got selected for a wildlife management area hunt that went great. I mean, the land opportunity there was beautiful. Uh, I was just an old piece of fart that had back problems and I couldn't make it out to hunt, but I had the opportunity thanks to Texas Parks and Wildlife Public Land. These draw hunts range anywhere from three to $10. Now, most of them are three bucks, but if you start going into some of the private ranches and some of the guided hunts, those are 10 bucks. And again, this is that's pretty cheap. Once you get drawn, there is a fee for everything, but it never maxes like 200 bucks. Boar's Den, that's the one I was selected for, paid $3 to submit my entry, and I had to pay 130 bucks once I got selected. Keep in mind guys, prices for a deer on private land are absurd. I mean, I get it. I know people have to make a living, but I'm not paying no $7,000 to shoot a deer that's literally roaming all over Texas in stupid numbers. If you got it, you got it, you know, but that ain't me even if I had it. I'm so $130 compared to three to five to ten thousand dollars. I mean, the prices can get outrageous depending on the on the, the buck you get, but I haven't seen them start less than twelve hundred dollars for a dub. So a hundred and thirty dollars is 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 nothing compared to that. And again, all this money goes to Texas Parks and Wildlife, guys. So the more you know, the more money that we spend on these licenses, on these permits, and on these hunts, the more money Texas Parks and Wildlife gets to to develop this land, to, to acquire more land, and just to provide more opportunities for us hunters to be able to get out and hunt, man. Because it's hard. Not everyone can go out and spend a million dollars on on 100 acres out in Central Texas to try to go hunt some deer. That, you know, hey, if you got it, you got it, man. Shout out to you. Let me know so I can go hunt your land. But... You know, if you grew up like me, I didn't grow up hunting land. My grandpa didn't have land in his in his lineage for years. So the only opportunity I have every year is public hunting. And I've tried my best to make the most out of it by these draw hunts because draw hunts can provide an abundance of opportunity, man. Abundance. Uh, another thing is the e-postcard hunts. The U.S. Forest Service antlerless deer permits, which I apply to every year for the Sam Houston National Forest, and then you have your National Wildlife Refuge Hunt. I can dive deep into each of these, but they all range from the place to the type of hunt to when you can hunt it to the price. So let me know, guys, in the comments below if you guys want me to dig deep. I can literally make a video on each one of these. I'm not a fan of making these videos of you just staring at my face here at the desk, but if you guys want the info, I'm definitely not one to hold back, man. Like I said, the more you guys that get out there and hunt, the more resources and, and funds that we provide the, the National Park, Texas Parks and Wildlife to provide even more opportunities for us. So with all this information, I hope you guys didn't get bored. I didn't want to make this too long. I wanted just to get you guys the three key things you need, man. That license, the permit, and the hunter safety education course. Don't forget, I got 10% off the hunter safety edu education course. Link down below. If you want to take advantage of it, guys. It is, you absolutely need it. Even if you're hunting private, I highly suggest doing it. But if you're hunting public, you absolutely need it. So I hope I see you guys out in the fields, man. I appreciate you guys watching. I can't wait to see you guys next time.